there's so much information available on the internet that sometimes it can be hard for people to interpret everything that they get. I'm a firm believer in spending all the time that's necessary in order for our patients and their families to fully understand what's going on to make a good decision. Hi, I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Friday, October the 27th. Well, there was news this morning in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette that the police had arrested Chris Alexander, a local man who I think he has a t-shirt business and a detail shop, <clears throat> on a variety of felony charges, drug possession, something like 10 pounds of marijuana seized in a variety of locations, gun charges, and being a felon in possession of gun also figure in the charges. This is not that unusual in Little Rock, I suppose, except for this. He was a founder of a community group that works supposedly with youth to steer them away from gang activities and into more profitable enterprises. He's worked with the city. His Facebook page fe features photographs of himself with Mayor Stodel and some of this anti-gang work. Well, it didn't keep him off the streets, apparently. And in a related note, City Director Ken Richardson, who isn't always happy with police tactics and how the city is addressing violent crime, particularly in his center city neighborhood, has scheduled with City Manager Bruce Moore a crisis in the community meeting November 6th at the Willie Hinton Community Center. He wants to talk about how police uh, seem to be overly aggressive in stopping people in his community, five police cars, to stop a single woman with a child in the car. He says that they're missing the real point of crime, but in any event, the city is not over the hump on that issue just yet. I'd urge you to take a look at ArkansasBlog.com and read a, an article there that, that is based on a New York Times column today about what Amazon was looking for in the competition for a new headquarters for its building. You know, Little Rock did a little public relations stunt and said, oh, we don't want Amazon. We know we're not really fit for you, but we're a great place. Well, that's true, but the point of the article in the New York Times is that the things Amazon want, a lot of people want. They want a livable, walkable downtown. They want good mass transit. They want great higher education. They want a city that's open to diversity and sexual orientation and, and race and all those other sorts of things. And we can't just say, oh, we're not worried about Amazon because other people may be smaller than Amazon, but they may want the same things. It's a lesson we need to learn. The debate about a new tenure policy at the University of Arkansas is growing. There's an article today in the Chronicle of Higher Education, very influential, that, that repeats the charges that this will make it easier to fire faculty members and also restrict free speech. The UAMS Faculty Senate has met on the proposal and they found it unacceptable, so it seems that the resistance is growing. It's un <coughs> excuse me. It's unclear whether there'll be a vote by the University of Arkansas Board of Trustees on this new policy at the next meeting in early November or not. Attorney General Leslie Rutledge, well, she's opened what she calls a district office. She's a statewide office holder in Northwest Arkansas, in Lowell, Arkansas, to be precise. The Attorney General doesn't have much street traffic in Little Rock or anywhere else, but this is a blatant political ploy. There are a lot of voters in Northwest Arkansas, a lot of Republican voters, and Leslie Rutledge is running for re-election. Hopes to run for governor of U.S. Senate someday, so this makes some points. Not to cost any money, she says. Well, it does cost money, but she's going to take some of the money won by class action suits on behalf of people that have been harmed by by bad practices of corporations and use it to enhance her political visibility in Northwest Arkansas. She's not the first to do that sort of thing. A new report came out yesterday after a study by the University of Arkansas's public health arm and, and Little Rock and other organizations about the state of landlord-tenant law in Arkansas. They're terrible. We have the worst landlord-tenant law in the country, but it's a criminal eviction process, the only one of its kind, and there's no warrant of habitability under Arkansas law. You need not have a roof or utilities in, in the place you rent. Well, they pointed out, in addition to these obvious drawbacks, that having poor housing can lead to health problems, both mental and Ill, Ill health, and perhaps this might move the Arkansas legislature toward doing something if the real estate lobby is willing, of course. The North Little Rock School Board announced today that they'd gotten bad legal opinion that in fact the person they appointed to zone five vacancy on the school board was not eligible to serve. Hannah Chambers doesn't live in that zone. They've rescinded that appointment. They're gonna have to have another process to fill the seat. French Hill, comrade French Hill, let's call him, is back in the news on the, heading to the front page of the New York Times because on a trip to Russia last summer, he received a document that Air echoed some talking points coming out of high Russian officials by which they proposed to work out a deal to end sanctions against Russia in, in return for some favors for the U.S. This is part of the ongoing reporting on Russian involvement in the campaign of Donald Trump. So far, French Hill has avoided questions on this. Perhaps he's getting closer to having to answer some. Jason Rapert, you remember the senator from Conway. 
He says the new Ten Commandments monument is finished and almost ready to be installed on the Capitol. A lawsuit will follow soon after. The news today is, is that a blogger known as a friendly atheist asked Jason Rayford why he raised $100,000 for a monument that only cost $26,000. He asked for an accounting. Jason Rayford wasn't happy with the friendly atheist and uh, didn't answer his question. If you see the senator, you might want to ask him yourself. And finally this, tomorrow's the fifth annual Little Rock Pride Fest, Central Arkansas Pride Parade. It's where people get together and we do welcome diversity here and, and sexual orientation and gender identity. LGBT people on parade. It starts at one o'clock near the Clinton Library and there'll be a couple hours of, of good times around the Riverfront Park. Uh, come join us tomorrow at one o'clock downtown Clinton Library, Little Rock Pride. I'm resisting other evil influences. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back next week.